Welcome to this video. In the last video of this mini-series, I introduced you to Stancil, a nice compiler which allows you to easily create your own web components. Here is the web component we created in the last video, this little modal, which is always there. Now in this video, I want to add some logic that we can pass in some data from the outside, then we can actually open and close it and improve the styling a little bit. So let's get started with that in this video. We got our model here and first of all, I want to make sure that we can actually open it, that it's not always there. Now for that, we could go to the index.html file and add a normal button in there, a normal HTML button, where I say open modal, just like that. Not my modal, just modal, thank you. Now this is the button. I'll now add some script here, conveniently simply in the index.html file so that we can have it all on one screen. And in that script, I now want to reach out to my button stored in a variable. So I'll use document query selector here to select my normal HTML button. And I will now say button add event listener and add a click event listener. Add a function here. And in this function, I want to open the modal. Now right now we couldn't click the button because the backdrop is always in front of it. So I'll comment out the backdrop and I don't want to have the modal opened by default. Now, to make sure that the modal isn't open by default, I'll go to the my modal scss file and add display non to it. So now if I save everything, we should have a white page with only the button in there. The rest should be hidden. Now I want to make sure I open the modal when I click the button. One convenient way, of course, is to simply reach out to my modal and store it in a variable too with query selector and now my modal. And I can use my own custom element tag here, just like I could use button because it's a normal HTML element now, my custom element, but here to JavaScript and so on, it's like a regular element. I can select it like this and I could set my modal, excuse me, modal is the name of the variable, modal style display to block because it's non by default, block should show it. If I now save everything, and I click this button, we see the modal without the backdrop because we commented this out, we'll work on this, but this is the modal. This is one way of doing this. However, there's also another way which might be more convenient in other use cases. Would it be nice if our modal just had something like a open method we could call? I know it's a HTML element, but still maybe we could execute some method on that open. Like we can call button click on a normal HTML element. To expose such a method you can call from outside, I'll go into the modal and I will import a new decorator. It's called method. And I will use this method inside of my class with the method decorator and opening and closing parentheses and attach it to a method I add to this TypeScript class. I'll name it open. The cool thing is, I could create a method like this anyways, but by adding the method decorator to it, I make it callable from outside. So like I plan to do by simply calling modal open. This will be possible because open is a method decorated with the method decorator and hence callable. Now in there, I could change the style, but I need to change the style of the element itself. Conveniently, there also is a decorator for this, the element decorator. I can simply use this and assign it to a normal property, which I'll name modal L, but the name is up to you, which will be of type HTML element and I assign no value. The value will be set automatically by stencil, so to say, and it will be the element itself. This allows me to access it here and say modal L style display is is like as German equals block, whoop, block like this. So with that, I got my open method. And now if I reload the page and I click this button, I still open it, but now on a different way. I call this open method, which is exposed to the public, where I then change the style from within. So these are two new decorators you learned about, element and method. Now you probably want to pass some data. 
One way of doing this is to go to the index.html file and maybe you want to set a title, which could be info and some content, which could be, this is an important information. So we want to set two attributes on our custom element to pass in some data. Now to do this, I'll go back to my model and you saw this earlier. There's another decorator we can use, the prop decorator. And I can use this to attach it to properties of this class, like to the title property, which will be a string, and also to the content, which will be a string. And this allows me to then output this here. So I'll get rid of this for now, use parentheses to nicely wrap this, and in there, I now want to have a div which wraps this, though theoretically you could also return an array here. So unlike in React, at least prior to React 16, you can't return an array, but I'll still wrap it here and I'll give a h1 tag where I now use this type of data binding, which you also might know from React, single curly braces. And there I want to output this title. And then I'll add a paragraph where I'll output this content. And the single curly braces allow you to mix your JSX code with references to your CSS, to your TypeScript class. If you now save this and you open the modal, you see info, this is an important information. Now this is already nice. Let's maybe add some padding to this modal though it's all sitting on the edge. So in the SCSS file, I'll add padding, 16 pixels maybe, just a little styling to make this a bit nicer to view. So that's important, that's of course nice. What else can we do though? Well, maybe we want to have a button in there which allows us to close the modal. And maybe we want to make this super complicated and have a button which allows us to show the button which closes the modal eventually. So we could add, let's say a horizontal line in there and then a button. And here we could say, show options. Now let's style that button a little bit. So in the my modal SCSS file, I'll nest the button selector inside the my modal selector. And there I'll remove the background color by setting it to transparent. I'll remove the border by setting it to non. And I will also set the outline to non. I will also set the font to inherit. So to use the uh, font we have up here, Arial and so on. If we save all that, reload the page. Oops, make sure to save the TSX file too. Here we see show options, options look like, looks like this. Now we need more styling. We should add cursor pointer here to make it look like a pointer when we hover over it. And let's maybe add a color like this orange color with FA923F as a hex code. With that, we got the show options button, which doesn't do anything when we click it. Now, when we click it, as I said, I want to show the options below it. So what we can do for that is we can go to my model TSX. And first of all, let's add a normal property up there. So maybe add it at the very top. I'll name this one buttons. And it shall be an array where I have two strings like OK and cancel. So that's my array and it isn't decorated with prop or anything like that. I also want to add a new property, which I'll name show options. And this will be set to false initially. Now with that, I want to listen to a click on this button and I do this by adding on click to it. Now on click takes these single curly braces and then a reference to the method you want to execute. So that could be show options handler. And the handler at the end is optional it's kind of the convention you see right now in Stansley components like in React that you name the methods triggered by your own listeners here with handler at the end. Now in there, I could set this show options to true. So this property I created here. Now all we need to do is use that property to show more options. So here I could use a horizontal line again and then I want to output all the buttons I have here. Now, since I stored them in a property, what I can do is I can use the single curly braces to output this buttons 
And then just like in React, I want to loop through all of them and basically output an element for each element in the array. Technically what I'll do is I'll map this array of strings into an array of HTML elements, of JSX elements to be precise. I do this by calling the map method and there we have a function which gets executed automatically. It's an arrow function here, but you could use a normal one, which will get executed for each element in that array and give me that element in each function call. So a single button. So it will loop through all the elements in this array. And button therefore is just a string. So then I'll use parentheses to structure this over multiple lines. I'll simply output a button element here. And in there, I'll again use single curly braces to output button, which is just a string, keep this in mind. So this will be the caption of the button. This should only happen if I click this button here though. So there I will call this show options handler. And just like you might know it from React again, you need to bind this on this method call. Otherwise it won't work because this in show options handler will not refer to your class here if this is called at runtime, if you're not binding this during development already. So that was a lot of work. If we save this, we see that if we reload this and open the bot, uh, model, we immediately see more options, uh, which makes sense because we have no logic to only conditionally show them. So I want to add this logic now. To add this logic, we still use the same concept we use in React. There is no directive like we have in Angular or Vue. There is no ng-if. Instead, since we simply use JavaScript here in the end, in the render method, we can create a variable which I'll name options. And by default, it's null, so, so nothing. Then I will check if this show options, if this is true, then I want to cut the code from down there and set options equal to it. Whoops, wrapped in parentheses. What this basically means is that, and I know this can, can look strange if you're looking at this the first time, that by default this variable is null, but if this show options is true, we set it equal to it looks like to HTML, but keep in mind, that's just a nicer syntax for JavaScript here. So we set it then equal to an array of buttons. And now we can simply use this options variable down there in our JSX code to output it. And it's either null, if show options is false, this will never be overwritten. And then we actually don't want to output anything. But if show options is true, options, will be an array of buttons and we will render the buttons. Now let's save this file and reload this page and open the modal. And if you click show options, nothing happens. This actually is to be expected. Stancil by default isn't watching all your properties for changes and doesn't re-render the DOM, the element, if one of your properties changes. You have to tell it to explicitly t uh, watch one. Like show options. When show options changes, we as a developer know that this impacts our template, so to say, our JSX code, because we use show options to decide whether we want to output buttons or not. So Stancil should actually watch show options. We can tell it to do so by adding another import, state. And we decorate show options with add state. This might look similar to you from React again. There you also have state, and if you change state, it re-renders your code here. And React also re-renders if one of your props changes, and that would be the case here too. If this changes, set from outside of course, it would also re-render your template. So now, since show options now is decorated with state, whenever we change it like this, it will re-render. And if you're coming from React, you don't need to call this set state or anything like that. You just change it like this. We now save this and we reload the page and open the modal. Now if I click show options, it shows the options. And I can't toggle it, they're now always there. 
You could of course alter the code to make this a toggle functionality and set show options to true if it's false and the other way around. Now with the options set, I of course want to close the modal whenever I click OK or cancel. For this, I simply need to add an on click listener to my buttons. And there I want to execute a method which I'll name close modal handler. Again, handler because it's triggered from inside, basically. It's not decorated with method. And in there, I simply want to copy that code where I set it to block and set it to non again. And here I will simply then call this on, uh, excuse me, not on, close modal handler and bind this again. And you could use an arrow function here too, like in React if you are coming from that background. So with that, if we now save this one more time and reload this, click show options, okay, and cancel, should both get rid of it. And we always see that if we reopen it because we never have logic to switch show options back to false. We could of course do this as part of the close modal handler. We could set this show options back to false so that the next time we open this modal, the options aren't there anymore. So with that, we're doing a lot. Let's go back to that modal, which we're not really seeing. If we simply, or if we also want to open the more modal, well, what we can do is, we call modal open here, excuse me, the backdrop. I want to show the backdrop. I can comment it in again. Now it's always there and we can't click the button anymore. So first of all, let's go to the backdrop and we can basically do this just like we did it with the modal. We can make sure that we implement that we set the display to non by default, add an open method and call the open method like we call modal open. Nothing wrong with that. In the next video, I want to show you how you nest components though and how you can then let the components interact with each other.